Hello folks, welcome back to another episode of Devotees of Jesus. Here's your host, Julian Phillips. Let's begin in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Virgin Mary, we turn to you because you've known Jesus so well. Give us the grace to, should I say, ask your son to give us the grace to find great meaning in this passage here. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 3, verses 16 to 21. Uh, Yes, God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world. Instead, through him the world is to be saved. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned. He who does not believe is already condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. This is how the judgment is made. Light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For whoever does wrong hates the light, and doesn't come to the light for fear that his deeds will be shown as evil. But whoever lives according to the truth comes into the light, so that it can be clearly seen that his works have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I have to tell a little joke. I just spent 10 minutes or so talking into this device, realizing I wasn't, I didn't press the record button. But you know, sometimes these things happen. <laughs> 10 minutes ago when I began reading this, this thought came to mind. I might as well share it again. I, I read some research from the medical fraternity that says something like this. Patients who come to hospital and whose overall disposition, or should I say mood, is optimistic, have far greater survivability and recovery rates than those who are pessimistic. So they've commented that you could have two people with the same illness. One has an, um, a certain what you might say, bright outlook on life, and one has a more dim outlook on life. The one with the bright outlook on life is the one far more likely to survive. He's the one far more likely to make a full recovery. Now, why is that? I think Jesus is telling us here. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned. He who does not believe is already condemned. So let me unpack this a little bit. What would you say is the best, who would you say is the best ambassador or the better ambassador of Jesus here? One, a church-going individual, a Bible-reading individual with a devotion towards Jesus, who has a gentle disposition, a happy-go-lucky approach, soft in his dealings with others, or next individual now goes to church reads the bible has a formal religious devotion to jesus but hmm, is known to snarl at people is known to be harsh is known to perhaps use some strong language which of the two is the better ambassador for Jesus. And you would say the first one. Now notice they both have something in common. They both have a formal religious devotion. They both go to church. They both read the Bible and they both hold Jesus as God. Now I've had this put to me and I'll answer it plainly. So are you saying therefore that maybe an individual who has no religious observances at all. He doesn't go to church, he doesn't read the Bible, and Jesus is just another name for him. But he has a soft disposition, he's gentle with others, he has a happy-go-lucky approach, he just has this attitude that you know all is well. Are you saying he's in good shape? And I'll quote Jesus, I'll say, he is not far from the kingdom of God. He is not far from the kingdom of God. Such an individual is a prime candidate to fall in love with Jesus in a very big way because already 
he gets what the association with Jesus is supposed to do. The association with Jesus is to make, and if you allow me to use this language, is to make your heart more like his. So I come back to a medical analogy. You don't want your heart to be hard. And I'm talking about that literal organ behind your sternum. You don't want your heart to be hard. You want your heart to be soft. A soft heart is a heart that seamlessly flows the blood in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And just as physically, medically, you want a soft heart, you want a soft heart spiritually. You want your heart to reflect the heart of God. And what is the heart of God? This is a quote from one of the Psalms, if I'm correct. You want a heart that is slow to anger, full of mercy and compassion, quick to forgive, quick to kindness. That is the kind of heart you want. So when we look at our friend who has a formal religious devotion to Jesus, he goes to church, he reads the Bible, but... mm, not exactly a happy, a happy camper. Well, what is, what is his condition? Well, he still has some steps to take on his journey. And what we pray is that with time, his formal religious practices will soften him. So what am I saying here? We are all on our own journey. We have, for example, and I'll do four people here now, no religious observances, not a happy camper. Religious observances, happy camper. No religious observances, happy camper. Religious observances, happy camper. So four characters here. Two have religious observances, two don't, two are happy two are not and if you'll allow me to say this then what happens to person a what happens to person b what happens to person c what happens to person d and my response is to you and to me mind your own business mind your own business now i'm being polite here i'm being a little playful check you which one of those four individuals are you i take it that if you're listening to this channel we can whittle it down to you are possibly these two characters either a person with the religious devotion who is pleasant or b the person with the religious devotion who is not pleasant if you are that religious individual who is pleasant praise god bless god and just continue god will fashion you more and god will deepen you more if you are that religious individual and you're not pleasant really start examining and holding on to and making a big deal of the softness of Jesus. So just turn off with this. We read in another gospel passage that Jesus Christ and James and John were in Samaritan country and they couldn't get um, any place to stay. And James and John called on Jesus to call down fire and brimstone because these brothers knew these sons of Zebedee knew the scripture story of what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah Samaritan places and that fire and brimstone came down on them and Jesus rebuked them Jesus rebuked them remember Jesus is God incarnate and if I could say this here Sodom and Gomorrah had fire and brimstone brought down on them because spiritually they called fit that Jesus rebukes James and John and refuses to call fire and brimstone on those Samaritan towns that refused him a place to stay is to show that God has no interest in punishing us. That is, that is the furthest thing from his mind. What he wants to do is to hold us and uplift us. Does this sound familiar? He wants to wash your feet. Let us all pray that physically and spiritually we are soft in heart. Amen. Our Lady of Good Counsel, pray for us.